Hey besties, right now I'm in the country of Rwanda and I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. Men, 2022 is your year. This is the year of reflection and self-care. This is the year for Manscaped. Manscaped offers the best tools and liquid formulation for your big three odor zones. Body, butt, balls. Manscaped's all-in-one performance package 4.0 includes special goodies like the Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer, their fourth generation electric waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, reducing nicks and cuts on the most sensitive regions of the body. And it has a superior cordless charging system, another trimmer with skin safe technology that deserves the praise. Manscaped's Weed Whacker, a powerful wireless nose and ear trimmer. Apply the Crop Reserver after your shower for all day odor protection. The Crop Reviver quickly refreshes the area whenever you need it. For a limited time, you get all this plus two free gifts. The Shed Trap Travel bag and the Manscaped anti chafing boxer briefs. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off. Free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use promo code best ever at checkout. Manscaped. Always use the right tools for the job. Now, on to the show. We are here. We have our final feast. Let me walk you through what's going on here. In here. Oh, take a look at this. This is like really metal. Good morning and welcome to the second channel and welcome back to our Rwanda series. Today is all about seafood and fishing here in Rwanda. In Rwanda, there's a few different types of geography. There's lots and lots of hills, but here we have Lake Kivu, one of the biggest lakes in Africa and the second deepest. There is a ton of fishing that happens here, but it's a completely different lifestyle and food experience than the place we went last time. Here, obviously, they're going to have a lot more seafood, tons of different options. My goal today is to check out this area. Then we're going to go to the market. They have some special endemic fish that are unique to this area. And finally, we're going to go to the home of somebody who is going to cook some of this fish in the local way. We're going to see how it tastes and we're going to show you everything from beginning to end. Are you ready? I'm already tired. That was a lot of talking. Let's go. Right now we're going to explore a little bit and see what's going on here. Molaho. Oh, hey. See, that's respectful. If you have fishy hands, you got to do one of these. Thank you. So here we can see tons of people working. Many of the boats have come back already this morning and they're taking the nets and I think they're taking the fish out. I'm sure there's bigger fish too, but these are the ones that get caught in the net. Right here, we have a little makeshift market. So this isn't an official seafood market by any means, but people living nearby, other fishermen, other vendors, they can buy locally and get the first buy of the day before it goes through 10 more exchanges. Oh, hi. Look at this little one. In the market here, I'm very excited. I just found a food vendor right here, Malaho. Boom. This guy, I don't know if he cooked it or not, but he brought it here. He's selling it. Take a look at that. That's a cake. This is full of these cakes. The local name is Bandazi. I had Bandazi when I was in Zimbabwe, but it was a completely different shape. In here, a bunch of other fried goodies. I see samosa, and then they have this. This is some fried bread. It looks just like a rolled dough that's been fried up. It feels nice on my fingers. I'm gonna try it out. It's fried bread. You cannot go wrong. It's oily. It's crispy. It's kind of doughy on the inside. The pork here, it's like heavy metal. Yeah. This is some pork and good food right here. The price for this is just 200. It's about 20 cents. So if you have a dollar, well, you could have a lot of oil because it's all fried food. But very delicious and a good snack on the go. Thank you. Malaka say. Thank you. I see that there's some street food here. This has to be super local because they're using the sardines that we saw uh, just nearby. It is a street food I've never seen before. It looks meaty, it's very oily. I'm gonna try it out in just a second. We have our food right here. It's called indeje. It means airplane. I guess, I don't know. It kind of looks like an airplane. This dish created here, actually, by this man right here. So let me walk you through the process. They have a wheat flour wrapper. He rolls it with a wine bottle. From there, he puts in a bunch of these sardines. He tops it with what looked like habanero, then scallions, and then even more fish. There are so many sardines in here. It's honestly, sardines are not my favorite, but it's fried. I like fried food. Maybe it'll taste like fish sticks. We'll find out right now. Not bad, like a big fishy meat pie. I love the outside. It's fried, it's crunchy, it's delicious. The amount of protein in here is complete insanity. You just open it up, it's nothing but fish. The flavors are actually pretty good. It's not fishy, it's very meaty. Of course, the fish is just cooked whole. Everything, the stomach, intestines, bones, it's all in there, but. You don't feel the bones. Oh, well, you do a little bit, but it gives it some texture. The scallion, the habanero, gives it a little bit of a kick, just a little bit different flavor. And honestly, there's a little bit of sand in there too. But you know what, sand, to me, that's like fiber. It just helps everything. 
it's moved, or is it, does it constipate you? If you want a lot of fat and a lot of protein, and you're sick of just eating ugali or corn or sorghum, I mean, this is a dish for you. Nice. Good, all right, she gave me the traditional Rwandan scowl. Ugh. So we've come here to the market. I've sat down because I saw some food I've never seen before. Right here, we've got packaged up peanuts. Nothing too unusual there, but this, it looked like Korean tteokbokki, but it is not that. It actually feels the same too. It's cassava, maybe even a cassava flour that's been mixed with water and then made very thick. Right now, this nice lady is gonna show me how to eat it. Mm. <laughs> All right, so you unwrap it and you take a bite. Okay, and then you take a bite of the peanuts. I thought this was gonna be a lot more complicated. This reminds me. This reminds me of when I was in Nigeria. By the way, that was not wasted. It landed right here. When I was in Nigeria, we ate bananas with peanuts. It's a popular street food snack there. This kind of feels a bit the same, but... We're getting food everywhere. I've got my cassava. And then I got the peanuts over here. Let's try it out. A bit dry, slightly fermented. The nuts certainly have more flavor. I cannot tell you why these go together. It's not like when you have chocolate and peanut butter and it's a freaking revelation. This is not a revelation. This is a mystery. Not bad. A very unique snack. The most remarkable part, it's only 20 cents. I guess it's a good food on the go. Very nice. You're doing nice work here. We've come to the fish area. I'm one of the vendors now. I'm kind of an apprentice. I'm working on it. She's teaching me a lot. Here, we have all the fish. Come take a look at this. Big, beautiful catfish. They're curled up and they're smoked on a grate for hours. And the smoking is gonna help preserve it for a long time. So last time, when I was in Makoko, I saw fish prepared the same way, but they were much smaller. This catfish is pretty dang big. So we're gonna get this and we're gonna see if they make that into some kind of a soup, if they fry it. We'll see what happens. So can I have uh, two of these for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For two of these big fish, it's gonna be $5. Incredible deal. I'm gonna give these to Nelly. Nelly's the person whose home we're gonna go to and we're gonna take all this fish, head to her house and start cooking. So we have left the market, we have all of our ingredients. Nelly just bought a bunch of produce and this is her home behind me now. We're gonna go back in there and we're gonna see the preparation of two different dishes. Some kind of a soup that's gonna be made with the catfish. Then I think the tilapia is gonna be fried. There's gonna be some kind of a carbohydrate. We'll find out what soon. For now, let's head in. So we have Nelly here. We've got the fire started, charcoal, outdoor cooking. Soon, the fish, the veggies, it's all gonna be ready and we're gonna have quite a feast or at least like a normal sized dinner. So these catfish have been smoked and they've been kind of put in this ring structure and actually tied together. She's undoing the ties. When this is done, she starts to cut it into smaller pieces. Then she heats up the oil. She puts in green bell peppers, onions, and this is parsley. Oh, the secret weapon right here. That's all the flavor, the allspice, the bouillon cube. Preparation is underway. This smells amazing. So we have a huge combination of flavors in here. It's tomatoes, it's onions. The parsley has an interesting aroma. It's almost like celery inside of there. Then there's the bouillon cube, the secret weapon, the nuclear bomb of flavor. She puts in some salt. All of that is kind of the base for this stew. And so in just a moment, this is gonna finish and she's gonna put the fish in there. I can't wait to try it out. We are here, we have our final feast. Let me walk you through what's going on here. This is ugali made from cassava flour. I've had it with corn flour. That's like kind of the most common iteration you're gonna find in many parts of Africa. But this is made with cassava. I wanna see how that is different. Over here, we have the fried tilapia. So this has been cleaned, gutted, cut, scored, seasoned with salt, and then she's actually rubbed cassava flour on top. I've had a bunch of different types of breaded fish, but never with cassava flour in here. Oh, boom, a catfish stew, and maybe the catfish his name is Stu. We don't know. Here you go. Mm -hmm. The head of this catfish is very hard. Dude, and there's another head. Thank goodness we got two. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a flip. Look at that epic catfish head. She's grabbing a piece of the cassava, gives it a little bit of a dip, and then she tries it. Okay, is it yummy? She says yes. Oh wow, the feel of this cassava ugali is very sticky, but you can still somewhat shape it into a ball. You go down here into your broth, give it a little bit of a dip, try it out. Here we go. It's delicious. It's tomatoey. It's very savory. There's a, a beautiful blend of flavors in there. And the smokiness from that catfish is really seeped into this broth. I've got some of the actual catfish right here. Mmm. A 
That's good. You can tell it's been smoked because it's a little dried out in a way. And the broth here has kind of rehydrated it and brought it back to life a bit. I'm gonna break the head open. Inside, look at all those weird parts. It's hard to tell what you should eat and what you should throw away. Look at that. It's like the soft palate of the fish. I'm gonna try that out. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> I want to just slurp up this broth because this looks so good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, it's very delicious. It's just like a super savory tomato puree with an incredible depth of flavor. Wow. Can we try some of that? This looks incredible. <laughs> very simple preparation. But again, I've never had it with cassava flour before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The cassava powder gives it a little bit of a crunch. Look at this skin. People grow up not eating skin. I love fish skin, especially like this, where it's kind of fried, it's full of delicious, healthy fats, and also unhealthy sunflower oil. Mm. Purely based on fish, I like this more. But man, this tomato we brought, so delicious. The cassava ugali, you can taste it slightly different from the corn, a little bit different texture, very, very sticky, but this is one of the very common carbohydrate options here in Rwanda and near Lake Kenya. Here, we can see the diet is very different, but also the cooking methods differ a lot from what we saw yesterday. Yesterday, we were really deep into the countryside, mud house, five bedrooms, separate kitchen, everything's done with fire. Here, everything's been done with charcoal. Tomorrow, we're gonna see something even more different than that as we head to the capital, Kigali, and we see how street food works in Rwanda. Otherwise, I just want to say thank you so much, Lakuse. Incredible job. It was so fun getting to experience the market, seeing her shop, and then trying the final product here. Really, truly loved it. Oh, guys, that is the end of the video today, our second day and our second video here in Rwanda. A little bit different experience. Yesterday is more in the highlands, today we're by the lake, and then tomorrow we're in the capital. Thank you for joining the second channel. I hope you enjoyed it. That's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. I'm gonna get some more fish. Maybe they have shark and cut.